But you'll have those same organizations that have that doing draconian password reset rules, like change your password every 90, 90 days. days. Yeah. And it's got to be 16 characters long. It's got to have upper and lower. It's got to, you know, it can't have been reused in the last 20 passwords. And it's like, man, mm -hmm. you're not following like the NIST recommendations. And if you think you can do it better than NIST, I'd <laughs> more power to you, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, you know what drives me crazy is you've got, you know, a, a modern, very good authentication platform like an Azure or even an Okta, and you've got all the bells and whistles and you don't enforce MFA everywhere, <laughs> right? You've got some other system that's like, oh, we don't have MFA on that one, but hey, we've got it on these other, you know, 80 systems. Guess where, guess where the targeted attacks are going to go? This is Identity at the Center. If it has anything to do with IAM, this is the go-to podcast. Now your hosts, Jim McDonald and Jeff Stedman. Welcome to the Identity at the Center podcast. I'm Jeff and that's Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Oh, not so bad yourself. Well, it's been a comedy of errors technically to get this episode started. So, um, given all that, I'm I'm good. I'm in a good mood. You know, next week we're going to be out in Las Vegas. I guess by the time this episode drops, it'll be this week in Las Vegas for Identiverse. It's I feel like we've been talking about it for the last six months, right? I think we have been talking about it for the last six months. <laughs> but yeah, it is finally here. I think let's see, it'll be Monday when people listen to this. And we'll probably be running around somewhere, getting set up and prepped and ready to do stuff. But I think the, the conference itself doesn't start till Tuesday. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back or like congratulate ourselves, but, you know, putting out a podcast requires a lot more work than the hour and 15 minutes that the podcast recording is, the output mm -hmm. is, right? And the conferences, especially like we have to get there a little bit early kind of map out where we're going to be, make sure we have power and all the things that we never had to worry about before. It's Isn't a different it set of it. It's a different set of problems. Like, you know, yeah. at home it's internet, certainly power and just the weirdness that AV can have with different OSs and browsers and stuff like that. But yeah, you get to a conference and the thing that I care about is that, is there a power outlet within reach, right? <laughs> of where yeah. we're going to be recording so that uh, we can do that. But yeah, it's... It's going to be fun. I think uh, we're looking forward to seeing a lot of, you know, friendly faces, new faces, meeting a lot of folks. I've had a lot of requests to, you know, stop by different vendor booths and things like that. So I will try to get to as many as I can, but apologies in advance. <laughs> I'm not able to hit everybody. Um, it'll be pretty busy for both of us. Did you get the request from Ron to come over to his booth and uh, check out the Belgian chocolates? No, I didn't see that one. Okay. Well, I'll share that one with you because... Uh, <laughs> Anybody that's going to have chocolates at their booth, yeah, I'm stopping by. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I've had a lot of requests to meet for coffee. And I think if I met all the people for coffee that have asked, I drink a lot of more coffee than I was planning on drinking. Mm -hmm. What happens if you don't drink coffee like me? You drink a, a soda or something like that? Yeah. Can we normalize, I, like, let's meet for a beverage rather than, you know, don't push your coffee agenda on me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're not a coffee guy or a not, tea guy. No. Caffeine, Usually soda. Usually one or the other. Yeah. No, none of the above. Um, so so what should people do if they want to, you know, reach out and kind of like um, either set up time or at least let us know that they'd like to meet? Because anybody who wants to meet me, I want to meet them. I mean, LinkedIn probably is the best way. Uh, get messages that way. I mean, just walk up and say hello or... If, even if it looks like we're busy, just at least walk up, say hello. We'll try to make as much time as we can. <laughs> Come stop by, uh, what's it, Copper Leaf 7, where we're going to be recording and, you know, watch an episode and try to catch us maybe, you know, before or after an episode begins or ends. Like, that's probably the best the best spot. But seriously, you know, for anybody who wants to say hello or get a official fist bump of gratitude for listening, just literally just, you know, grab my arm or say, hey, Jeff, or whatever. I'm happy to, to stop and chat. Absolutely. Yeah, someone... 
someone uh, messaged me, and you know they're a real listener when they bring up something you said in one of the episodes. And it was, I was in the Atlanta airport the other day, and I, it didn't smell like a bathroom to me. <laughs> it didn't to me either. I got to tell you, I had a terrible flight home from Chicago that lasted from Sunday into Monday because of weather in the Asheville area. And I had to exit the airport, and I didn't smell anything. So, you know, if you listen to that episode, uh, hopefully it sounds to me or it's, it smelled to me like Atlanta had their, their act together. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you're like a pro traveler at this point. And I remember when I first started traveling, those kind of episodes would drive me badly. Like, you know, you're supposed to be leaving at four o'clock and get there at six o'clock. And then it just gets delayed, delayed. They cancel the flight at one in the morning. Mm -hmm. You go take a hotel, sleep for an hour, then come back for a 6 a.m. flight. It gets pushed, pushed, pushed. Mm -hmm. and you finally wind up getting home at like 2 or 3 in the afternoon. You're just like, I probably could have walked home faster. I definitely could have. I, I could have driven home from Chicago faster than it took for me to get just from Atlanta to Asheville. I got to Atlanta, no problem, from Chicago. It was yeah. just, you know, there's weather and I get it, clouds and stuff like that. But, you know, first yeah. what problems, you know, my magical chair in the sky couldn't get me to where I needed to go <laughs> uh, in, in the time frame that I expected. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Yeah. So, um, you know, as far as the podcasting schedule, we've got two podcasts lined up on Tuesday morning. I know a lot of folks are flying in Tuesday morning. If you're flying in, it's probably you're probably not going to get there in time to see us um, podcast live. Wednesday, at this point, it's looking like we're not going to be podcasting on Wednesday. It's like but a free Thursday. day. Like we may pull random stuff to happen that we, day. We could. Yeah. But we don't want to make any promises yet because they're not scheduled. Right. But Thursday we should do three episodes. So mid morning through mid afternoon, like you said, copper leaf seven is the room where we'll be. Uh, hopefully we have like one of these style of, uh, you know, placards in front of the room. But even if not, you know, copper leaf seven is where we'll be. And we would love to have you just drop in and listen. Yeah, come see the session also that I'm moderating uh, around CAPE, Continuous Access Evaluation Profile, Shared Signals Framework. Um, that'll be fun and interesting. I had a prep session earlier today with the with the group to talk about what we're going to talk about. <laughs> um, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but there will be things for audience members to obtain. Uh, I don't want Sean to get mad at me, so I don't know. And I'm not. A, I don't know if that's a secret or not, but I would just say if you attend there is the opportunity to receive something related to CAPE and SSF and things like that. Okay. Hopefully that's cryptic enough to drive people in and I balance the line where Sean doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> well, Sean is um, from Disney. So when you said it was- it's, uh, I can tell you, it's not Cape anything Disney related. I was disappointed when you said it was related to CAPE and not to Disney. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's, uh, it's not the Iron Man outfit or anything like that. I would love to have like that, but no, it is it is not that. Uh, but, you know, kind of a neat little thing to be, to maybe received. Definitely a limited edition, let's put it that way. Yeah, the other thing I'll mention is like, if, you, if you're getting there and you haven't kind of like solidified your after hour schedule, uh, Tuesday night, we are co-hosting an event Identity to Center podcast, RSM, and Talos Group. We're having a happy hour at the Lift Bar, which is in the Aria. Um, in my opinion, it's like the best bar in the Aria. I've only been there. And you Jim know, would know because one he time, but you know, and I've already formulated opinion on the best. But I'll say that you know we'd love to have folks there. Um, I'm not really sure where we are in terms of the list. I'm not managing it this year. Yeah, so we might already be getting close to full. But either way, best way to, to reach out is LinkedIn, direct messages, and we'll keep an eye on that during the week. Yeah, there's a guest list and a registration link, so I'm limited spots. So I know I've sent out a couple already, but if you're interested in attending, um, hit us up on LinkedIn. We can provide the link. And like you said, Jim, um, we're not in charge of the list, but you know, hopefully we can, you know, and maybe influence if we can get some listeners in as well. <laughs> yeah. You and I will probably be hanging out when we do a free time. We're not podcasting or you're not um, facilitating. We'll be at the Talos Group booth. They've allowed us to kind of like park ourselves there. So 
that's going to be a good way to, to find us as well. Yeah. I'll probably bounce around between sessions and stuff like that too. So, um, yeah, you know, actually attending the conference and hopefully hearing <laughs> from people and learning stuff. <laughs> that's a foreign concept to me, man. It's like, we've gone to the conferences so many times and like barely been able to go to sessions, but every year I go determined that this, this year is going to be different. I'm going to hit more sessions and you know, this year, especially with Wednesday being kind of an open day for me, um, you have the, the session and I'll be there for your session, but before and after that, I'm planning to hit as many sessions as possible. And always, as always, the keynotes are, you know, I'm always there for the keynotes. Yeah. You know, it's, is it sad that one of the things I'm looking forward to, forward to is getting a new headshot <laughs> done? So, you know, it, it, pro, pro tip, if you don't have a headshot, go get one. Like conferences are a great time to do that. You stand in line for a couple of minutes, you get a few, you know, high quality pictures taken and boom, you've got a new headshot. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Do it on the day when you decide to wear your business casual clothes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or at least something Not that your you Metallica can, t-shirt can crop, right? Or, hey, if you want to wear Metallica a t-shirt, that's fine. I mean, that just More shows your personality. You. Right. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Maybe, you know, Metallica is hiring and they want to look for an identity person to gatekeep, you know, all their, their secret recordings. <laughs> Probably not, but yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I can dream. Who does? Um, Maybe. Yeah. What, uh, you know, I feel like this is our last chance to do a promo also for it. Should we mention our discount code? Even though, like, at this point, man, you should, really should have registered before you just show up at Identiverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're... Count on the discount code now. That will be a record. I don't think anybody's ever used it on the day before the conference, but right. why don't you go ahead and give it one more time? <laughs> yeah, and it'll be in our show notes too, but IDV24-IDAC25. If you like just decide on a whim to hop on a plane or you're in the Vegas area, like, oh, I'm going to stop by Identiverse and just casually do that, you know, that gets you 25% off. And hopefully it works on the same day. Actually, I don't even know. Hopefully it works, but... Yeah. Yeah, if, if that's something <laughs> that you that you forget to register, that has happened before. Uh, I won't name names, but somebody did show up and uh, it wasn't me, uh, showed up and uh, realized that they did not register and had to pay same day rates <laughs> to, to get in the conference. That's definitely not me this year. Mm -hmm. like I registered and then I checked with one of our folks on the inside at the conference to make sure that my registration, even though I had all the confirmation emails, it's just... I didn't want to be that guy. Yeah. So I know we planned on making this episode a little bit shorter, but we should probably talk about something identity related. Um, there was a report, the 2024 State of Passwordless Identity Assurance that just came out, um, produced by Hyper. Do you want to talk a little about that? Can I kind of just set the table for you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, the, the basis of the report is about um, organizations who are surveyed in terms of you know what kind of identity related breaches they've uh, experienced, what percentage of those organizations have experienced those breaches. Um, I th think my biggest takeaways. I mean, I, I went through the document really quickly. It just released yesterday. Uh, the takeaway was like, what a high percentage of organizations are running into these breaches. So like something like seventy five percent, and of those like over 90% was either the credentials were fumbled or the authentication was weak. So those are two things that really jumped out at me. Um, yeah, I what, what jumped out at you from that report? Well, I had three numbers that I had picked out and you picked one of them, which was 91% of breached organizations basically said that authentication weaknesses were a leading cause of why they had an issue. So. That's a lot <laughs> to attribute to it. You mentioned this, it was 78% experienced some sort of identity-based attack. I got two other numbers for you. Uh, let's, let's see if you can guess. Um, the average cost of authentication-related breaches in the last 12 months was X million dollars. Mm -hmm. Solve yeah, for X. I'm, oh, it's, it's at least 1 million, though. You're giving me that hint. <laughs> I am. <laughs> All right, I was going to say $2 million. Nope, $5.48 million. Five and a half, basically, to solve for, to fix, you know, authentication-related breaches. So, you know, that's probably a decent qualification there. They're talking about not all breaches, 
breaches that were based on authentication. That's a lot of money. You know, hopefully that gives folks out there some, uh, you know, some ammunition to basically say, hey, we probably should have MFA in place and conditional rules, adaptive rules, maybe go passwordless. Uh, or, you know, the alternative is this is something you might be looking at paying out in the future if, if you have fall prey to this attack. Yeah, $5.4 million is going to show up on your annual report, you know, and that's to me kind of one of the litmus tests of, you know, like how bad was it? It's not something you just kind of peek within your department and like, yeah, we won't let that happen again. That's a potentially a career limiting type of event to take place. So, um, but I think, you know, who's really surprised by that? When you talk about like a breach taking place and data being exfiltrated from your organization or ransomware being planted on your systems, what, what choice do you have really but to pay the ransom or at least deal with the consequences of that? Or if your data is exfiltrated, providing services like identity protection services to the individuals affected, plus your PR groups out there like, you know, trying to make it sound like it's not as it really, really <laughs> probably was. Um, yeah, so this cost us to kind of mount and mount and mount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I had if I had to add up all the credit monitoring stuff that I have for free because of breaches, I think I'm good <laughs> for the next couple of decades. It seems right. like a de facto thing, but um, let's see. There was another number. 89% of organizations believe passwordless authentication provides the highest level of security. Now, obviously, you know, I, this was hyper and they are a vendor that plays in this space, but that's a pretty decent number. I wonder what the other 11% think when it comes to why they don't consider passwordless the highest level of authentication. I wonder if it's maybe like an identity assurance levels or they're thinking maybe, you know, some super uber cryptography and, you know, validation for governments, stuff like that. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe they think MFA plus password is good enough. Could be. I mean, you know, it's, I'm not going to pick on any organization specifically, but you see it happen so often where it's like they have a high end MFA tool, like, uh, the Azure authenticator where it'll throw a number on the screen that used to be like, okay, pick one of these three mm -hmm. hacker could just get lucky. <laughs> so, um, but now it's like, oh, you see the number on the screen, you have to enter it in. So like, I think that MFA tool is really strong. Um, but you'll have those same organizations that have that doing draconian password reset rules, like change your password every 90, 90 days. days. Yeah. And it's gotta be 16 characters long. It's gotta have upper and lower. It's gotta you know, it can have been reused in the last 20 passwords. And it's like, man, mm -hmm. you're not following like the NIST recommendations. And if you think you can do it better than NIST, I'd <laughs> more power to you, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, you know what drives me crazy is you've got, you know, a, a modern, very good authentication platform like an Azure or even an Okta. And you've got all the bells and whistles and you don't enforce MFA everywhere. <laughs> right. You've got some other system that's like, oh, we don't have MFA on that one. But hey, we've got it on these other, you know, 80 systems. Guess where guess where the targeted attacks are gonna go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that could explain some of the other eleven percent. I think there's also just a portion of the population that probably doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is mul pastoralist is like on the multi, uh, what do you call it, like multiple choice? <laughs> they might They're like, that's say, not a real thing. You can't get rid of passwords. Right, it's <laughs> not a real thing. They're not keeping up. And it's like, no, this is real. It's really here now. <laughs> but I, so from what I've been reading is that one of the things, and we're going to have Andrew Schick here as one of our guests at uh, Identiverse. And so supposedly he's going to announce some news Right here. So mm -hmm. make sure you're downloading episodes over the next two weeks as we're dropping them. Um, but what I've, I've read somewhere was that Fido is starting to say, okay, yeah, we, we kind of like come so far with the pass keys and it's the best form of authentication for web applications, like possession-based authentication. 
but now what's the next what's the next um generation of improvement and it's like the identity verification process you know mm. doing a validate or verified credential um i was saying either that like, or non-proofing like non-web apps is also too like that's always a challenge is like i don't think like sso and mfa is a challenge if you're already online but what if you have like a legacy app or an on-prem app or something like that where it's not web-based right you see like proxies and stuff like that sometimes that could be an interesting use case to try to figure out how to put passwordless in front of that. I know there's third-party vendors that, that do some of that work, but that could be an interesting evolution too. Right. Yeah, but I think like the identity proofing is really, I mean, that resonates with me. Like um, if you have the identity right and you're doing an identity proofing process where you're maybe picking up some factors that can be used for either the authentication or for resetting the credentials if you will so in other words you're doing that live selfie test and so rather than just having a pass a magic link sent to your email when you need to reset your password mm -hmm. or reset your credential you have to go through the live selfie test again and are you the same person every if single not, time <laughs> maybe that's when you start getting into human intervention oh here i know here's what's next we just what we should invent a tiny little camera that sits at the top of your screen and it's just always watching you to make sure that it's always you. <laughs> Big brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else from the report that you want to talk about? Because we'll are gonna have a, we'll have a link in our show notes for people to go out and get a copy of it themselves. No, I, you know, here's like, even though in the end, again, you mentioned like hype, this report came from Hyper and the conclusion that it came to was, around Pastoral is definitely, you know, matches up with their marketing message. I still think it's very beneficial when organizations are out there and providing real world research to the community. So I think that's something I wanted to highlight, like when we get an opportunity to, to find these reports, share the information, share the link, and for folks to go out there and download the report, read up on it, and just, you know, sharpen your salt, sharpen your own saw. Yeah. I mean, these little like, you know, numbers and little nuggets of information are great at parties, right? Hey, what's going on in your world? Well, did you know that 75% expect AI to provide an advantage over cyber, cy over cyber criminals? <laughs> I need to read the report and see what that means, but <laughs> I mean, certainly AI is everywhere, but you know, now it's obviously in the identity and the security space too. Yeah. You can tell well, I'm really fun at parties. We're going to be using AI and we're going to be using AI, so. It's <laughs> you can be tell the... I'm really fun at parties because I'm bringing up facts like this. <laughs> oh yeah. Identity parties anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, what else do we want to talk about? We were trying we're trying to make this a little bit of a shorter episode. I think making a shorter episode makes a lot of sense because we can see if you know people like the shorter episodes or if uh the long format that we've been doing for the last five years. I think we've been trying to do shorter episodes <laughs> for five years. And it's like this is gonna be a shorter episode. It winds up being an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. I'd be curious to hear from folks if they'd rather have something that's more like half an hour or an hour. Or we generally try to shoot for 45 minutes, but sometimes conversation is just so good. And sometimes it takes a little bit to get to the actual conversation and that we run a little bit long. But I'm curious to see what people think um, and take that feedback and maybe I'd do something with Also, it. like now that we've been doing more video, if people are enjoying the video or sticking to the audio, I think we're going to do both regardless of what people's... <laughs> opinion is right so your opinion but doesn't matter we're going to do both video your and opinion audio. doesn't matter but please share it with us anyway no <laughs> right. but i mean um i've listened to mostly audio podcasts so i do watch some podcasts on video that are more like tv shows but mm -hmm. podcasts like ours i listen to on audio we're not doing anything like crazy in the video yeah i don't listen to podcasts those are stupid <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else? Anything else or should we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up, man. I was trying to think of a lighter note question and I didn't really think of anything. So it's going to be just kind of off the cuff here. Um, what is the worst thing that you can think of to do in Vegas next week? What do you absolutely not want to do? So don't want to stay out and party till like the sun comes up because you're probably not going to go to any of the sessions the following day. 
I'm not trying to be like poo poo old grandpa get off my lawn. I'm just giving some advice. Cause the same advice I think we've given a million times is like um, pace yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that, look, there's always going to be parties to go to. There's always going to be like craft tables to go to. Um, do those things with doing in moderation. And then I would say like the, to flip the script on that question, some things that are fun to do. I think the shows in Vegas are like incredible. Every show I've been to is awesome. We're doing two different shows that I haven't done before. Uh, one is called Shim Lim. He's a magician over at the Mirage. The Mirage is only going to exist for another two months. Um, and then we're going to the Sphere. So That's cool. We're just, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I mean, it just seems like such a great experience. So. How are well, you? I don't have any fancy plans like that. My brother's going to be in town, so we'll probably get some dim sum off strip or something like that. Uh, but I'm the same way. I think, you know, staying up all night, that is a, a young man's game, and I am no longer that. So I need my beauty sleep to try and take care of this ugly mug. Um, <laughs> but I think not taking advantage of the city of Vegas is something that I don't want to not do. Great food, great people watching. This is an opportunity, one of the best conferences in the year for identity to talk with people in the space, get their opinions on things, stuff like that. So I'm trying to take full advantage of it. Can hopefully I can attend more sessions than I normally do. So I'm hopeful that I will not be in Copper Leaf Seven just straight editing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's so much. There's so much to experience. So take it all in. Mm -hmm. Just pace yourself. All right, this might be a record for us. The clock that as I'm watching this is 25 minutes, almost 26 minutes. We'll go ahead and wrap it up for this week. We are at Identiverse. If you're listening to this, come say hello, say hi. We'll be walking around. Jim got his beard done. He's got a special jacket that he's going to be wearing. Uh, we'll be on Copper Leaf 7 doing podcast recordings at different points throughout. Uh, I'll be hosting a panel on Cape with uh, some new friends. Uh, let's see, that's Wednesday at 1140. So come out and check that out. And what else? On the web, idacpodcast.com, youtube.com slash IDAC or slash at IDAC podcast. We'll get you right there. We have a link also on our webpage. And uh, let's see what else. Mastodon, IDAC podcast at InfoSec Exchange. Are you sending a trend here, like IDAC podcast? You know, wherever, wherever you go. What about X? You didn't say X. Are we uh, still I, doing X? I don't know if I, yeah, we're still there. I just haven't. Decided not to promote it, but I guess we will as well. At IDAC Podcast, how about that? There you go. All right. Connect with us on LinkedIn. If you want to meet up, drop us a note. We'll do our best to try to do that. You know, walk up, say hello. We're always happy to meet folks. Uh, Jim's going to have stickers. I think I'll probably have some as well, where I'll resupply as I see you, Jim, for the first time in a while. Um, and yeah, like, subscribe, do all those fun things. You know, share it with a friend, share it with an enemy. Don't care as long as someone's listening or watching. <laughs> so we'll leave it there. Thanks, everyone, for watching or listening. And we'll talk with y'all in the next one. You've been listening to Identity at the Center. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at identityatthecenter.com. See you next time on Identity at the Center. <laughs>